Hi, welcome back to my channel. And again, thank you for all your support. And uh, for today's video, I'm going to provide now the part two of the isomorphisms on linear transformation. Now, um, if you might notice, um, if you have f here from v to v, okay, technically it's an identity map. We all know for a fact that identity map is both one to one and on two. So that means uh, the identity map, so I'm going to write it here. One, identity map. is isomorphism okay number two if you have a mapping here from f uh, of f from v to w um and it's an isomorphism um which means to say that um, yeah it's an isomorphism so it's a linear transformation and bijective at the same time um we have done this on the previous video that the inverse is also a linear transformation and in fact it's already um discussed on the on the function that the inverse of a function is also bijective once the function is given to be bijective so therefore this is also a linear um transformation which is isomorphism so meaning to say that the inverse is isomorphism as well so this is isomorphism Okay, number three. Um, let's say if you have your f here from um, v to w, and you have another uh, map here from w to u, okay, and uh, they're given to be isomorphisms. And uh, remember, the composition of functions here g of f which is actually um, v to u this is already famous a result that this is bijective so meaning it is one to one and on two well let's say if this preserves linearity so if you have this one here let's say i have c1 v1 plus um, c2 v2 okay um let's say if it preserves linearity um this is g of f of c1 v1 and uh remember um f here is isomorphism so i can have this like this Okay, that means I can split them because F here is a linear, is a um, linear transformation, and it's an uh, yeah, it's an isomorphism, so it's a linear transformation, and so um, G also is a linear transformation. Um, so there's no problem with that. I would have G of F of V one, and I have. Okay, so therefore, um, it preserves linearity, which means to say that um, this is also an isomorphism. So what does this imply? What's the moral of this discussion? Okay, so this one is reflexivity, meaning to say that it's actually a reflection from a given vector space to itself. And this, um, this number two here is actually symmetricity. Which means that a given vector space is actually um, uh, a, correspondent, a correspondence to a, another vector space. And such another vector space is actually a correspondence to that given vector space. And so this one here is transitivity. And so it's basic that um, it's already discussed in a basic math that when the, uh, when this is actually um, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, this becomes equivalence relation. 
So, the isomorphism of linear transformation is an equivalence relation. And so, if it's an equivalence relation, that means they can be subdivided into equivalence classes. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you a um, necessary and sufficient conditions um, result that will imply out, that would tell us um, as a property for a given isomorphisms of linear transformation. So, I'm going to introduce to you this lemma here. So, let V and W v vector spaces okay um over a field f okay such that um v is finite dimensional okay moreover let f that maps from v to w be a linear transformation okay now um the requirement here is the domain is finite dimensional it doesn't have to be uh, finite dimensional also on the codomain um it only says here that uh the domain the v here is finite dimensional okay so number one f here is uh, one to one if and only if the kernel of f is the set containing zero okay number two um f here is on two if and only f if the image of f is entirely the codomain and number three f is isomorphism if and only if the kernel of f is this and image of f is entirely the w so, so actually we can only focus one and two here because three here is already the result of combining one and two now um this uh, lemma is actually um the explanation of um telling you that um you have a linear transformation with given that the domain is finite dimensional then um, automatically that given linear transformation is actually one to one meaning it's a monomorphism um if the kernel contains only the zero vector and then um f is epimorphism or onto if the image of f is entirely the w okay so that is actually the implication for the discussion of a linear transformation that is an isomorphism so how do we prove this so let's prove first number one so let's go forward so f here is one to one okay so let's assume f is one to one so I'm gonna show the outline here. Um, F is one to one. So let V be in kernel of F. Okay, our goal here is to show that V here is actually the zero vector. Now, observe that this V here is an element of kernel of F, meaning to say that F of B is actually the zero but it's the zero vector on the codomain not on the domain okay so we have discussed that already on the previous video about the introduction to linear transformation that um f of zero v is actually zero w and so and since f here is unique because it's one to one here it implies that zero v is actually the v Meaning to say uh, that the kernel of F is actually the set containing 0V. That's it. Okay, let's go backward. So this is the backward direction. Uh, the first that we have done is the forward direction. So let's go backward. Let's start of assuming um, kernel of F equals um, 0V. And then uh, we should end up... Um, uh, concluding that f here is one to one so when kernel of f is zero b so let uh let assume that 
v1 and v2 be element of v such that um, f of v1 equals f of v2. Remember that the technique before when we prove that a given function is one-to-one -one is when we assume um, two elements from the codomain and then we should end up that the corresponding um, elements from the domains are all also equal. Okay, now um, our goal here, so the same case scenario, our goal here is to show that the, they are equal, this v1 and v2 here. Okay. Um, F is a linear transformation, so therefore, um, this one here, um, it preserves the subtraction, which I have discussed that on the previous video, that um, linear transformation um, does not preserve only with addition, but it also preserves with subtraction. So I would have F of V1 minus F of V2, okay? And so... Um, they um we assume this that the they are equal so if i if they are equal this becomes zero vector okay so this implies that um v1 minus v2 because um f of v1 minus v2 is zero vector so this is actually element of the kernel of f okay since the only element of kernel of f is zero v this simply tells us that v1 minus v2 is actually 0, 0 v, which implies that v1 is equal to v2. And so, f here is 1 to 1. Okay. So, we have already proved then that number 1 here is uh, true. Okay. So, if you have any questions or clarification, you can comment down there so that we um, can discuss that thoroughly. Okay, and um, if you will have something to add here, then you can also tell us here on the comment section. And for number two, this already follows from the definition of an onto function. Definition of an alternative definition of an onto function is that um, the, uh, the image of a given function is actually equi equivalent to the codomain. So nothing to show us that it's quite basic. So therefore, what we have done so far that we have exact asserted effort on is actually number one. And since we have the result that one is true, two is true, automatically three is also true. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so another important result um, will give us idea that uh, given the behavior or given such kind of um, linear transformation, it would give us the idea as well of the dimension of a given vector spaces. Now, um, we will introduce this lemma here, um, provided that your um, you have a given linear transformation here. So number one, if f here is one to one, then um, the dimension of v is less than the dimension of w. Meaning to say that if it's one to one, the dimension of the uh, the domain is less than or equal to the dimension of the codomain. For number two, if f is on two, then the dimension of uh, the domain is greater than or equal to the dimension of the codomain. And number three, if f is an isomorphism then the dimension of v is equal to the dimension of w okay let me start with uh, proving number one now f is one to one what happened if it's one to one then the previous um lemma that we have discussed earlier is that the kernel of uh, f is the set containing zero vector meaning to say that on the previous video when it's a zero vector the nullity of the f is zero okay i've discussed this on a previous video now um when this is zero this implies that um by the rank nullity theorem the rank of f is equal to the dimension of v remember that the rank nullity theorem 
as I have discussed that on a previous video, that's actually dimension of V equals the rank of F plus the nullity of F. Okay. But remember, the image of F is a subspace of W. Then this implies that the rank of F uh, is less than or equal to the dimension of W. Therefore, since rank of F is equal to the dimension of V and um, rank of F is less than or equal to dimension of W, this simply tells us that um, the dimension of V is less than or equal to the dimension of W. That's it. Number two, we will show that when it is on two, the dimension of V is equal to the dimension of W. Okay. Now, um, F is on two. So what happened? When F is on 2, the image of F is equal to W. Okay, but um, image of F is equal to W. This simply tells us that the rank of F is equal to the dimension of W. But remember... That V here, um, the nullity of F is always greater than or equal to zero. That's the fact. So this simply tells us that the dimension of V by the rank nullity theorem, um, supposedly this is equal to the rank of F plus the nullity of F. This is greater than or equal to zero, which implies that um, this is greater than or equal to the dimension of W. That's it. So, since we've shown that when F is 1 to 1, the dimension of V is W. So, F um, 1 to 1, this is dimension of V is less than or equal to the dimension of W. F is on 2, the dimension of V is greater than or equal to dimension of W. So when you combine F1 to 1 and on to this is, F is an isomorphism. So when you combine this inequality, you would end up having dimension of V equals dimension of W. So therefore, when F is an isomorphism, then the dimensions are equal. And this is actually the proof of number 3. Now, if you might notice that F is an isomorphism, you would have... Um, Dimension of V equals dimension of W. Now, have you ever wondered if, is it possible if the dimensions are equal, does it necessarily follow uh, F is isomorphism? So that means when you have the statement F is an isomorphism, then um, the dimension of V is equal to the dimension of W. So the, does the converse hold? Meaning to say that if uh, the dimension of V is equal to the dimension of W, is F an isomorphism? Well, we will answer that on the next video. So that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. So if you have any questions or clarification, you can comment down there so that I would know and we can discuss that thoroughly. So um, thank you so much for being so supportive with me. And uh, again, we will have another video that will answer on the last questions I have thrown you earlier. And um, so far, this is, our, is actually the basic of um, the isomorphisms of linear transformation. Thank you. And um, again, don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I, have, I will be uploading soon. Have a great day to you.